ahead on early birds. The Falcons are looking to bounce back in one of the NFL's toughest places to play. Lofts it, Barkley, end zone, makes the grab, touchdown, Philadelphia. Jock will talk Kirk Cousins, and we go one-on-one -on -one with Grady Jarrett. All our goals are still ahead of us, and uh, we're going to put our best foot forward. Plus, he'll take a handoff with Bajan Robinson. I'm looking at his eyes, he's looking at me, and it's just like one-on-one, -on -one, like who's going to make it out, and I'm trying to make it out every single, every single time. And the dogs get ready to open up SEC play. You can keep on the comfy clothes a little while longer. Early bird starts right now. Your favorite Joe, and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz. Good morning, and welcome into Early Birds. He's DJ, I'm Justin, and the Falcons are getting ready to pay a visit to the nicest, most polite fans in the entire NFL. Nothing about Philly is <laughs> nicest. I mean, it's called Broly Love, but there's no love when you go there as a visiting team, so I don't know about nicest. Well, they'll try to leave those home fans quiet with a win <laughs> Monday night. We'll bring our manners here, though, on Early Birds as we start with the opening drive. Shock, Falcons, and Eagles, Monday night football. Let's talk Kirk Cousins, though. Some struggles in week one. Raheem Morris says he's still healthy. Shock, what did you see? I'll be honest. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He did not look as healthy as a lot of people thought he would going into this ball game. There were just instances in the game where you felt like, he could move better, or it just didn't seem like he was the old Kirk Cousins. Never been really mobile, but he always was a guy who can move a little bit inside the pocket, play action. We saw none of that. Hopefully, things change this week and they make some adjustments, and that kind of is uh, something of the past. But ultimately, I think uh, there was a little bit of uh, unhealthiness there going into game number one. DJ, you said you're not going to sugarcoat it. Neither was Raheem Morris. The assessment is easy for him yesterday. You know, it wasn't good enough. You know, we threw two interceptions. Um, we got to make better decisions in the passing game all around. Uh, we can't turn the ball over to allow our defense to go out there and get some big stops to us, which they did. But, you know, it just wasn't good enough. And we're going to be really clear about that. Whether it's wins or losses, we always make those assessments to our quarterback and to everybody else. It's just the quarterback to get the most attention at all times, along with me. All right, let's do a little opening drive, double up, and stick with the same topic. Shock, give me your take on the offense as a whole. Are we just overreacting after week one, it's a blip, or are there some questions that need to be answered? Just, I'll be honest, I think it's a little bit of both, but I do feel like this is an offense that showed that it can move the football. There were times where they did move the football up the field, but then there were instances where you had instances where you had fumbles, or you had a, a false start penalty, or you had a legal formation, things that kept you behind the chains that afforded you not the opportunity to get going on a particular drive. So I think this is an offense that can to a lot of points. They can move the football, but they just hurt themselves. If don't do that, you got a chance to be better. Yeah, you can't do that in a loud road environment against a really good Eagles defense. And as we wrap up the opening drive, let's talk about the Eagles offense. And it starts with a pair of real good guys, outside receivers, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. Will be a big challenge Monday night. Yeah, you're talking about guys who can stretch the field, guys who can make things happen with the ball in their hand. This is a offense that with Jalen Hurts, they're going to run the football. Saquon Barkley is going to yeah. be a problem as well. There are a lot of weapons on this team. I know the defense is looking forward to, hey, going against this challenge because it will be such a big challenge. But those receivers, you can't allow them to do things like this and have a big play. Here's head coach Raheem Morris on facing a really good group of skilled players. A.J. Brown has been doing it for a while in this league on, I think, two different teams now. He's consistently been a problem in a number one lineup for a long time. It just so happens to have a 1A, 1B, whatever you want to call the Slim Reaper, the Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, he's been a, a pretty productive and significant player since he's been in the National Football League and in college. The thing and the skills that they provide are off their charts. It's our job to go stop them. Credit where credit's due, Slim Reaper is a good one. Slim Reaper is a good one. Good nickname. Welcome, yeah. <laughs> welcome into Early Birds <laughs> alongside DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. And that Eagles defense stocked with former Georgia Bulldogs. You got two in the middle, Jordan Davis mm. and Jalen Carter. They're going to try to go right up the middle at Kirk Cousins. And that's one thing that's going to be interesting because with a guy like Kirk, who we're talking about being not as healthy, mm -hmm. pushing from the middle of the pocket is probably the, the most concerning thing as a quarterback being there because you can't really step up. Got to make sure you control that middle of the defense. Well, Shock, in honor of a great Philadelphia, and I'll just say other analysts are playing checkers. You are playing chess. It's the uh, great Kobe Bryant. Oh, okay. I'll take Kobe because I thought you were going to use Rocky or something in Philly, but I like Kobe too all day. Got to go Kobe. Yeah, you got to go Kobe. Philadelphia like, like Kobe. zone. Go warm up the telestrator. We'll see you in a few. But first, boy, was it good to see number 97 back on the field last Sunday. One and a half sacks. Defense didn't allow a touchdown. And most importantly, it was a comeback completed. Our Victor Prieto sat down one-on-one -on -one with Grady Jarrett this week. 
So Grady, it had been 315 days since the last time you played football and this past week mm -hmm. against the Steelers, the longest gap in your career. Yeah. And you balled. Yeah. Jarrett, you shall not pass! You guessed it, big Grady Jarrett came in and polished. Was there any sort of mental hurdle you had to overcome in getting there? No, nah, man, no, nah, not, not at all. I know I put the work in, you know. Anytime I feel like I may have a little bit of anxiety about something, I just tell myself, man, you know, scared money don't make money. You know what I'm saying? You can't go out there do, and do a job if you have stepping. Grady Jarrett with the ACL injury, he will be out for the remainder of the season. Take us behind the curtain a little bit and like, what was that process like in rehabbing and how difficult was it? The process was tough, but it was a tough process that I just had to trust, you know, and um, just give your best every day. And it was one where you couldn't let days be wasted, especially from being in my position during the time that I got hurt in the season last year, knowing I wanted to open up the next season, you know, not waste much time and just trusting that um, when you give your best every day that you'll see the work works, you know what I'm saying? What was the biggest thing you learned in that process? Um, not taking stuff for granted, you know, uh, cherishing all the moments, you know, and um, also know that I'm far, far away from wanting to stop playing football. Like, I've got so much more ball left in me, man. Grady said, uh-uh. I've been in the league 10 years. I know what I'm doing. You know, I want it now more than ever, and uh, I just know that my best ball is still ahead of me. Let's talk Philly a little bit because you guys are traveling to Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Monday Night Football, yeah. their, their home opener, uh, Nick Foles' jersey retirement ceremony. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the crowd's going to be going. <laughs> in your experience, what have you learned to kind of play in a hostile environment like that? How can you mitigate it? I mean, I, I just think you got to embrace it. You know, when you play in a hostile environment, it should bring the best out of you. You know what I'm saying? Philly got great, great fan support, man. You know, the fans rowdy, they're tough. It's a tough city. And uh, the team go hard for them. You know what I'm saying? Home opener, they're going to do their best. So we got to be all, we got to have our stuff together. We got to be right. And um, I played up there a couple of times in the playoffs before and in the regular season. So it's a tough place to go. Um, but it's fun. You got to embrace it. You know, you got to embrace the challenges. And uh, it's going to be a tough, tough squad. But I think we'll be ready. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. Hey, you talk about being ready. There are things you have to do in this ball game to make sure that you mitigate, like my man Victor Prieto was saying, in a hostile place like Philadelphia. And one thing is, you have to be able to run the football. You're talking about being able to run the football. This was the play in the game where they did a really good job of running the football, but it's how they did it. It's how they set it up. Now let's talk about it. So what happens here is they're actually going to bring a little motion out this way. When Bijan comes in motion this way, this linebacker, watch him step outside. Now you have a lighter box and you can run the stretch zone. You want to run stretch zone this way and now you're going to creak angles. The center does such a great job right here. He's going to do a great job of getting up on this backer, which creates a lane to throw to the receivers able to block on the outside. Let's go through here. Here comes the motion. Now look, look at this backer. As soon as this backer comes out here, you know you have a lighter box. Now it creates the angles for your front lineman to come over to be able to block this guy. Now you create that outside zone where you can run the football. Now as the play increases, there's the double team, and look at this block here. This is beautiful. Look at this block, getting two guys, getting this one guy blocked, you got a seal block here, and now you got a zone where you can run this football. Nice job of getting it up in here, receivers blocking on the back end. Now I'm going to show you again from the backside what it really looks like, what makes it so special here on the backside. You're talking about getting the angles and about the motion here. Nice job of angle blocking here. Now look at the angle. Do a nice job of seal block, seal block, and then now you hit the crease right through here, and the first guy to get to him is this safety. Nice job of hitting it. Nice job of going through. And this is something the Falcons will need to do in this ballgame is run the football. You can run the football. You can slow down a really good defensive front, and you can get after them on the offensive side of the ball and command the ball game. Justin, the run game, Tyler Algier, B. John Robinson will be a big part the Falcons are able to get a win on Monday night. Yeah, shock and keep that offense for the Eagles on the sideline. Appreciate your insight. More to come on early birds. Georgia gearing up for SEC play. Kentucky Wildcats looked a little mild last week. Michael Jenkins will break down how the dogs stay perfect. Plus, when I'm on a defender, like you have a split second to make a decision. I'm trying to get the defender as uncomfortable as possible. Bajan Robinson will give you the handoff and tell you what to do next. That's when we go deep. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz. Best, nothing. And sponsored by the Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. And the Home Depot. How doers get more done. More Early Birds coming back at you. Early 
Birds. It's not Saturday down south without talking college football. Brought to you by Zaxby's. Famous fingers and saucers. Here's Shock. Welcome back in the early birds. We got the legend himself, my man Michael Jenkins, in the building. And Jake was on that tech wagon for a long time. Are you still I'm on it? Still on it. I'm okay, still okay. riding with Coach Key. Hey, down 31 14 in the fourth. They almost came back. So you feel good about the fight? I feel, I feel, I feel good. All right, all right. Well, let's, let's jump into the matchups for today. You got a big matchup going on in Lexington. Dogs headed to Kentucky. Kentucky looked kind of bad last week. They yeah. struggled against South Carolina. Should the dogs be on alert, or you feel like they should handle this pretty easy? Nah, they should handle it. Kirby's going to have these guys ready. He always does a phenomenal job of coaching. It's just surprising to see how bad Kentucky played against yeah. South Carolina, only putting up six points. So, you know, former transfer, Vandergriff, going yeah. to you know, perform better against the dogs and try to show, hey, you know, that's the reason why I'm going to start. That's a good point. Yeah, he definitely want to play well versus the dogs. Here's Coach Smart talking about what he learned about his team through the first two weeks. I think uh, that, that first half of, of Clemson and then all our practices are tough. But that first half of Clemson was really tough and you, you find out a lot about how we adjust, um, how we respond to adversity, um, but we still haven't played on the road. Yeah. So we get a chance to do that now. Another interesting match today, Jink, is Bama on the road at Wisconsin at noon. Bama didn't look as good. I know the score shows something else, but I thought yeah. that was a lot tighter game versus UCF. How does Bama fare on the road at a place like Wisconsin, a place they've never been for? Yeah, surprisingly, they've struggled the last couple of years playing USF. And, you know, now going to Camp Randall, Big Ten, place I play in quite a few times, yeah. it's not easy. So they're going to want to get off to a fast start. Van Dyke and that Wisconsin offense is going to try to slow the game down with running the ball and ball possession. So, see how things go. Does that thing get loud? Oh, yeah, yeah it gets really loud. <laughs> All right, here's mm -hmm. uh, Coach uh, DeBoer saying there are a couple areas where he wants his team to be there going forward. I think a lot of the stuff that, you know, needs to be worked on was pretty obvious. I think sometimes you look at a game and maybe statistics don't show uh, the things that we know as a staff we need to work on. I think pretty obvious uh, penalties and and ter takeaway turnovers, uh, creating takeaways and, and limiting the turnovers uh, is a high priority. Turnovers was something that Colorado did not do last Ooh. week. Let's talk Coach Prime and those buffs. Took a big L versus Nebraska last week. What do you make of Colorado and their struggles against Nebraska? You thought it would be better. Uh, where are we with Colorado right Coach now? Coach Prime, Coach Prime, what's <laughs> going on? I don't know. They've lost seven of eight. Oof. They can't stop the run. They, you know, defense giving up points. They can't run the ball themselves. They can't protect your door. Uh, I mean, it's a struggle right now. They're going to have to clean up a lot of things fast just to try to get to six wins mm. and maybe get to a bowl game, which they haven't been since 2020. No doubt about it. They got to go on the road tonight at 730 against Colorado State. Should be another interesting one. Jake, we always preach the insight, but uh, one more thing I got to ask you. Texas and m Florida tonight. Can the Gators get it done? <sighs> Sorry, but no. <laughs> they beat up on my Sanford Bulldogs. My yeah. son goes to school there, yeah. so no, they're not going to win. J Justin, how you yeah. feeling, man? Jake has no confidence in your Gators. <laughs> hey, hey, it was cool to see your son doing well against the Gators down in the swamp, <laughs> but we'll see if the two-quarterback system will help Billy Napier turn things around. Guys, thank you so much. Well, my favorite segment on this show we do every week is called Going Deep. It's where a Falcons player explains how they do what they do. Bajan Robinson is fast. He is agile. He can run you over, but it's his eyes that set up his most successful runs. Robinson takes you behind the line of scrimmage in this week's Going Deep. When I get to the line of scrimmage, I'm seeing the defense and seeing like where the safeties are, if they're rotated, um, if it's like a run play, then I'm seeing you know where the where the DNs are, like where my aiming point needs to be, and then I'm seeing like linebacker stance if they're blitzing or if they're not, um, or just kind of seeing where their eyes are going if they're walking around. When I get the handoff, then everything just kind of slows down. When I hit the hole, then I'm on a defender. Like you have a split second to make a decision. Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm trying to get the defender in as, as uncomfortable as possible. So I'll probably make like one move before I get to him and then hit him with, no, with another move as I got to him. You want to keep him guessing because you don't want him to just, you don't want everybody to think that I can just juke out everybody like, because then you can start, you know, scheming for that. If you have all those tools, which I, you know, keep working on and keep trying to perfect every single day, then that's when that's when the sky's the limit. So, but yeah, when I'm at a defender, like I'm trying to, I'm looking at his eyes, he's looking at me, and it's just like one on one, like who's gonna make it out, and I'm trying to make it out every single, every single time. 
That was really cool insight. We've had a lot of talk about Kirk Cousins' health this week. It's tough for anybody to come back from a torn Achilles. The Falcons head team doctor gives you some insight from the medical side on that specific injury. That's next on Early Birds. Going Deep is brought to you by Zaxby's. Famous fingers and sauces. We're getting your Saturday started right. Early Birds is back in a moment. It has still been less than 11 months since Kirk Cousins tore his Achilles as a member of the Minnesota Vikings. Cousins says he's feeling good, but it's a serious injury that can take many athletes a long time to recover from. We wanted to give you an insight on what a torn Achilles means and what that lengthy recovery is like. That's the focus of this week's Emory Road to Recovery. Achilles tear is a common injury that happens in the National Football League. It happens across sports altogether and really across all ages. And so as somebody has an Achilles repair or a surgery to repair that tendon, what we're looking for is many different things during the recovery process. So initially we want to have just basically the incision heal and just the initial swelling and the initial pain kind of go away. So there's a period of time where you're just in a splint or a cast or a boot and things are kind of immobilized and you're not doing a lot. Then as that initial process occurs then we can start to move the athlete through more of an active recovery phase working on re-establishing a little bit of muscle tone re-establishing the ability to walk re-establishing a little bit of range of motion and we get somewhere out to the four month mark when usually biology has happened and things are well healed then we can start to push the athlete just push the patient so then they can start to be a little more strenuous and they're strengthening a little more aggressive and they're running or jumping tolerance and then as that successfully moves on we then start adding in sports specific drills. So for a quarterback position, for example, we'll start working on drop backs, working on throwing mechanics, working on, you know, rollouts and things that they will need to perform in the pocket during the game day situation to avoid, you know, getting sacked. So we get Justin to do some rollouts here soon. More to come on early birds. The Falcons made sure some kids are sleeping good. We'll tell you about it after the break coming up on early birds. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. I think my favorite part is pulling off the pajama boxes and letting them go through it. And some of the kids do dug all the way to the bottom of it to find their perfect pair of pajamas and just letting them have the option to be able to pick what they really wanted and be able to have that decision and just help them there and see their smiles and be able to, honestly, seeing them smile made me smile and it's just been a fun experience so far. Ah, you love Captain America out uh, there, right? Yeah, he's saving the kids, saving the world. That's what he does. Uh, Falcons players took 80 kids to Jambo's Warehouse in Buford to pick out new pajamas this week. You got to always stay cozy, including in the early mornings, watching early birds. I mean, why didn't we just come in our PJs? Come on, man. What, that sounds like, sounds right, right? This is These are my pajamas. Yeah, yeah. People don't want to see PJs. PS and PJs, yeah. But, but kudos to the Falcons, man. It is awesome. And to see those guys giving back. And the rookies, you see them there. My man, J.D. Bertrand. I noticed in the videos, all the inside line. You yeah, see that? Yeah, kind of yeah, go, like going that. as a group. The event was designed to help foster families in need. So a very cool event. Appreciate the Falcons doing that. Remember for you this week, programming note, Dirty Bird Report will be airing at a special time, Monday Night Football, Monday Night at Midnight, Shock, mm. Jank, Kelly Price wrapping up the Falcons and the Eagles. So give me one more matchup to watch. We didn't really mention the name Saquon all that much. Big star added to the Eagles offense. And he was a big part of their, their week one win, mm -hmm. running the football, had a receiving touchdown, had a two rushing touchdowns. Right. He is a threat coming over from New York. Look like he's kind of uh, got a chip on his shoulder, rejuvenated. It's going to be fun to see how the Falcons go about stopping him and those receivers we talked about earlier. And we've been talking all offseason since we got the schedule just how tough this stretch was at the Eagles, Chiefs. home against the Chiefs. If you can get back to one and one, you feel a lot better. All right. Let's go get a win on Monday night. Let's we'll go. wrap it up Monday night on DBR. That's it for Early Birds. Yeah. For DJ Shockley, I'm Justin Felder. Thank you for joining us. Have a good morning and a great weekend.